panorama of speed, color, drama, and excitement. The American Sports Cavalcade. Indianapolis Raceway Park, home of the NHRA U.S. Nationals. Since its inception in 1955, always the largest and richest drag race of the year. This, the 35th edition, 1,000 cars, $1 million. Hello everyone, I'm Steve Evans, and here at IRP, performance legends are created on a regular basis at the U.S. Nationals, and this weekend has been no exception. Yesterday, in funny car qualifying, Don Perdome rocked the drag racing world with an elapsed time of 5.17 seconds. Yep, you heard me right, 5.17. It even got the men's attention. Five one seven. Holy cow! <laughs> well, I'm really proud of the. I'm really proud of the car and the crew and everything they've done here. You know, it's just been a, a struggle, but. Uh, it's hard to stun you. I think I just did. Yeah, I didn't realize it. Wow, that's that's awesome. It was four second laps times the top fuel director fans wanted, and that's exactly what they got. First from Dick LaHaye, the perfect painkiller for his now famous broken rib. Dick LaHaye just heard the PA announcer declare a 498. He has become the first man to ever run beneath five seconds All at right. Indy. Uh, Steve, I've been... Don't hurt that back. Oh, and believe me, that back can get hurt now. I mean, we worked for that all weekend. And we went out there earlier this morning and smoked the tires, and Kim said, look, it, we got to calm it down. And I said, we can't slow it down, though. And lo and behold, she made the right call. Thank you, Lord. The LaHaye team hadn't got the cork out of the champagne bottle when right behind them came Daryl Gwynn with a quicker 498 to take the number one spot. Congratulations, kid. Thank you very much, Steve. Last minute, you know, we're here with the U.S. Nationals. And this is the biggest race of the year. <laughs> this is it. I mean... Was this, a, was this a goal? It was for like, hey, to get into the fours, not just qualify well. You know, every time we, I'm going to get off the subject, every time we back this car down, it runs quicker. It's telling us something. So uh, we got a good combination to race tomorrow with, and we weren't really planning on coming up here and running a four, but uh, You'll take it, it worked out, you bet. <laughs> Well, the grandstands are full and the pits are overflowing with shining faces, all anticipating what might possibly be the greatest U.S. Nationals ever. Now, we've shown you the drivers behind all those great performances. Here's Paul Page to tell us how those times came about. Well, Steve, this is the motor that turned that remarkable run for Daryl Gwen, and this is the team that gets it done. His dad, of course, Jerry Gwen, the team manager that helps coordinate this organization, but the crew chief, of course, is Ken Venny. Well, Ken to run a magnificent run like that. And in fact, to do better, what are you going to have to do? To do better, I believe we can do better, but to, we need to do about the same thing we've been doing. We're going we're gonna to try and maintain just what we're doing now, to, but that's what it's going to take to win. And of course, the real key is the fact that it's a team effort. It's a team effort. For sure, no one person did this. The guys all working together here on Daryl Gwen's Top Fuel Dragster. That's the story on the technical side in Top Fuel. For the story in Funny Car, let's go over to three-time world champion Don Garlitz. Well, the performance of this car has been phenomenal and you have just witnessed the starting of the most powerful funny car engine in drag racing history. Mike, how did it sound? Uh, sounds about like it did yesterday. Sounds good, no problems. Well, you know, you got half of a national record and um, obviously you're gonna wanna try to back that up because that's extra championship points. Is there anything left in this engine that still stays safe? Um, probably uh, just a small amount. Uh, we're just gonna try and stand on what we ran yesterday and just try to go out and run good and we have a small performance advantage over the field and we're just going to try to utilize that advantage today and just try to stay safe and win the race. That's a real cool move because obviously it wouldn't uh, serve any purpose to try to increase that performance and then uh, risk blowing up the engine. Yeah, we stand to lose uh, a lot more than we stand to gain if we uh, try to go any quicker than our 17 or the 19. Uh, so we're just going to try and play it safe and win the race. Good move. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, both Daryl Gwynn and Don Perdome survived first round of elimination until earlier today. Now it is time for round two of Top Fuel. 
this man in the famous yellow car, Eddie Hill versus Gordy Bonin. Again, Eddie Hill carrying our Diamond Peace Sports camera. Of course, you realize, Steve, this is last year's car, maybe even a couple of years ago. This is the old car that Eddie Hill has gotten. He has gone away from the 300-inch modern fueler. But he's up against a car that is as modern as any of them. In fact, it was completed mid-season and is driven by transplanted Canadian Gordy Bonin. That's the machine in the far lane, owned by Ron Hodgson. Now, Bonin was a very famous money car driver, went as far as a runner-up spot here at the U.S. National some years ago, and he brought out of retirement his crew chief in that period, Gordon Jenner, and what a big, pleasant surprise he has been. This car just blind, qualified at 5'10". Eddie Hill, unofficially the quickest top fuel driver of them all at 4.93 seconds from Wichita Falls, Texas. Buzzy Carter, you've met him before. One of the very best, and look at that qualifying last time, a 5.04. Of course, that's Eddie's wife, Ursie Hill, that helps place the car in line. She said she and Eddie talked about it. going back to the old car. It was something that they really felt would be successful. Gordy Bonin, who has been working as an NHRA official the past several years, in fact, at this race one year ago, worked with us down on the starting line. We do wish him well. Eddie Hill's right hand holding onto that brake, trying to restrain 4,000 horsepower until the flash of the yellow light. They're away. Bonin got the better start, but smokes the tires. Eddie Hill, 5.06, and we all just traveled 275 miles per hour. Paul Page is at the starting line with Fuzzy Carter. Fuzzy Carter, good little run with a 5.06, but it looks like it's going to take more to win this event. Yeah, it still looks a little soft on bottom. We've got the clutch kind of straightened back out. We've been having trouble with it. Eddie's hitting a second stage himself, and we brought our old car back, and it's working real good, and we're pretty tickled. All right, Fuzzy Carter on his way now to join Eddie Hill. In the meantime, behind us on the starting line, Frank Bradley rolls up in his matchup with Joe Amato. Now, let's go to the far end, and Steve Evans. Since the first round this morning, the heat is up a bit. The humidity is definitely up quite a bit, which makes Eddie Hill's 506 even more impressive. Oh, boy, it feels good. It sure feels good to have this thing repeat and not break. Boy, I love this little car. <laughs> Well, you brought it out of the barn. Yeah, there's some use still for antiques, maybe even including me, huh? <laughs> you think it's on the edge? Well, I don't know. Uh, it's hard to tell driving a car. It felt pretty good in the car. The computer should tell us, you know, whether it's trying to turn a tire or not. We'll find out. Sure you will. Well, consistency has been the problem for Eddie Hill, but now back with the old car, maybe he can get some of it back as Joe Amato moves back in the lanes, ready for his confrontation with Frank Bradley. Well, Joe Amato has been on a tear recently trying to catch the Winston points leader, Gary Ormsby, and he's been doing a good job of it. In fact, he won the last race in Brainerd, Minnesota, and the one before that in Seattle, Washington. This car has been undefeated. Crew chief Tim Richards, who experimented with a shorter car like Eddie Hill, has now fallen in love with the latest in dragster engineering. Frank Bradley will all season long. He's had one of the modern 300-inch cars and won probably the biggest race of his career with some help from Junior Connerty. That was the California Nash in his own backyard. What a day that was. But Amato comes into this round with a definite disadvantage. Frank Bradley has lane choice and the quicker car. This may be the end of the line for that new car. Temperature, humidity coming up, which means lane choice is critical. Amato with a terrific hole shot on Bradley. Now Bradley trying to catch him down to the end, but it's Amato all the way. Tim Richards, the crew, very, very happy with a 516, 287 miles an hour. Well, it's been a long time since I've seen a man give up so much distance at the starting line. Frank Bradley must have just figured he had a motto covered completely because he sat there almost a full tenth of a second and watched a motto drive away from him. Now, motto didn't have a real good run. He smoked his tires just a little bit, but look at the difference at the end just from that starting line advantage. Amato had the hole shot, and he definitely needed it to keep ahead of the charging Frank Bradley. Look at the comparisons there. But Amato won the race because he got there first. Now he's at the far end with Steve. Well, Joe, engine performance is always important, but this time it was driver performance. Your 16 defeated Frank's 511. Well, Steve, I, I had to pedal a little bit here because the car started shaking and, you know, was ready to smoke the tires, but, you know, this is a tough race, you know, and it's cri very critical for the points. You saw Gordy Bonin smoke the tires right in front of you. You had to be concerned and you had to be alert. Yeah, when I, I did the burnout, I looked because he, he actually went a little bit to the right and I wanted to just make sure I was stayed straight and I went down through the center of the lane and tried to do my job. Good thinking. Thank you. 
So Joe Amato moves ahead at the U.S. Nationals. Will it be a third straight victory for him? Back in the funny car pits, the car of the points leader, Bruce Larson. They work on that machine as they're ready to face Ed McCullough in funny car round number two. We'll be back with more Top Fuel right after this. Brought to you by Dodge Cars and Trucks. On the street or off the road, it's the new spirit of Dodge. By Stroh, Old Milwaukee, and Old Milwaukee Light. It doesn't get any better than this. And by Goodyear Eagle Tires. Goodyear, because there really is a difference. Ram pickup. Built like the proverbial brick. We got it. Apartment house. Cape Hatteras and Old Milwaukee both mean something great to these guys. Hatteras means surf casting for bluefish, and man, do they love to fight. And Old Milwaukee means a great beer. Cold, crisp Old Milwaukee beer. And smooth, golden Old Milwaukee light. Something like the flavor of a special place An old Milwaukee beer Old Milwaukee and old Milwaukee light Hey guys, this doesn't get any better than this All of these championship winning drivers have one thing in common Goodyear Racing Eagles the race-winning technology that's found in the Goodyear Racing Eagles can also be found in the Goodyear Eagle line of high-performance street radials, the best-selling performance tires in the world. Goodyear Eagles, for the spirit of a champion that's in all of us. I believe in mom and dad, and I believe in you. Rich, mellow. Country's favorite balladeer in an exclusive concert special. One good well overflowing with everlasting love. Don Williams, live from Tucson, Tuesday, 10.30 p.m. Eastern, only on TNN. Well, don't it seem kind of funny how... Welcome back to Indianapolis Raceway Park and our coverage of the 35th running of the NHRA U.S. Nationals. In most forms of motorsports, if a vehicle is torn apart like this, it means the crew has big trouble. Not in funny car drag racing. This is just normal maintenance to make sure everything is right on the Tom Hoover car, who will face Chuck Etchells in round number two. We are continuing right now with round two of top fuel racing. Paul Page. Out on the line, it's Kim LaHaye that directs her father, Dick LaHaye, back into position. LaHaye has lane choice in this confrontation against Lori Johns. Lori Johns is having her best performance in her entire career. Qualified for this race with a 5.03. Was actually low ET of the event for a whole session of qualifying. An amazing young woman in only her second year of professional racing. Very popular with the fans. A most pleasing personality. And she's always got a smile on her face because of this man, Larry Meyer, who gives her the kind of performance she needs to be competitive. Dick LaHaye, well, he was the first ever into the fours here at the U.S. Nationals in qualifying. The Lansing, Michigan-based crew headed up by his daughter, Kim LaHaye, have got a good shot at winning this race, and they need the points desperately. LaHaye has lane choice. They've chosen the near lane. Traditionally, that is the faster lane here at IRP. Staged and ready. Lori Johns away first. LaHaye even. Whoa, what a drag race. Lori Johns, brilliant start, made it a squeaker. LaHaye wins at 5.06 to her 5.13. 5.06, Kim, that's going to help out, give you lane choice. Uh, does it? Yeah, oh, yeah, I it. guess it does, yeah. Um, yeah, we were just trying to run a 5.05, a 5.06, 5.03, to try to repeat what we did the first round. Let's hope you can continue to do that through the day. Good okay, luck. Okay, thank you. Kim LaHaye, back to find her father. They will meet Joe Amato in the semifinals. Lori Johns makes a beautiful start. She knew she had to get every advantage at the starting line possible because LaHaye had run a 498 in qualifying and had run a 5-0 in the first round. And she got the starting line advantage, but the power of the LaHaye engine began to come on as they motored down track and ever so slightly as they reached the end, LaHaye put a wheel out in front. 
Just watching Dick LaHaye get out of the car, it's obvious that he's feeling better. Apparently not in a lot of pain as he has been, and this will make you feel a little better, too, a 5.06. Well, that's fine. You know, we just wanted to kind of stay consistent, not do anything crazy. We got to race Joe next round, and you know what happens when Lamato and LaHaye tangle. And lane choice here could be critical. Very much so, yes. It, uh, we figured it was going to slow down two or three hundredths, and it did exactly what it was supposed to, so now it's time to go race. You have that lane choice. Thank you very much, Steve. We yep. need it. The Dick and Joe Show is always something to look forward to. Lane choice so critical here at the U.S. Nationals, as everywhere, of course, is determined by who had the quicker ET in the previous round. You can see the confidence on uh, Daryl's face. He's waving to the crowd. That team has definitely found something in this car that has brought the performance up to the level that they like. And uh, Gwen is uh, having a real good time out there. He, he's probably figuring on running another four-second run. And here is the man that dominated in the early going. In fact, Gary Ormsby won four of the first NHRA National Championship events, had a tremendous points lead. Until he started crashing cars. First at Sears Point when the wing came off, then at Brainerd when a wheel span ensued. So Lee Beard and his crew have had a tough 30 days now on their third car. Daryl Gwen remembering three final round appearances and three defeats here at the U.S. Nationals, two of them to Big Daddy Don Garlic. Ken Benny, one of the most talented men in all of drag racing, that 498 proves his worth. Now, this was back in round number one as Daryl Gwen was about to make drag racing history. In the near lane, he'd already turned a 498 in qualifying. He needed to run within 1% to come up with a national record, and he did it with a 499. The fours in the heat of the day is a dream come true for me at the U.S. Nationals. Yesterday, in all your excitement, you said the more we back down on this, the quicker it runs. That's exactly right. Uh, it's teaching us all a little lesson every time. It's, I guess it's got to beat it into us, and finally, here in September, this late in the year, it's finally got our attention. So here we are, back in round number two. Again, lane choice so very critical here. Gary Ormsby on the far side. It is Daryl Gwen on the near side. Ormsby is really under the gun, Paul. He has seen Joe Amato already survive round one and round two. He's trying to keep pace on the point. It's another good one. Oh, but it goes to Daryl Gwen. Thank goodness for electronic finish line judges. A 504 at 280 miles per hour puts away Gary Ormsby. In the replay, we see Gary Ormsby giving it his best shot, but Gwen wasn't asleep either. Very good start for both cars. But Ormsby's old, outdated car was no match for the modern Gwen car as Gwen easily drives around him in the middle of the racetrack. Look at that yellow car go. One super drag race, and with the completion of that round, we're now set for the semifinals in Top Fuel, where Daryl Gwen will face Eddie Hill. Gwen will have his choice of lanes, and Joe Amato and Dick LaHaye will pair up, and that critical lane choice will go over to Dick LaHaye. Let's go to the far end, Steve Evans. Gary Arnsby, just a terrific drag race, but unfortunately, you were on the wrong end of it. Yeah, Steve. Uh... We're a little disappointed, but, uh, you know, it's, this old car did us pretty good this weekend. But those footsteps of Joe Amato just keep getting louder and louder. There's no question about it, and we got to go to another race for this car, so hopefully we can just hang in there and then have our new car in Topeka and get back in this hunt. Thanks for a great job all weekend. Thank you. Well, the second round of Top Fuel is now complete. The pairings are set. The funny cars are in the staging lanes and rolling forward. Don Perdome's crew is ready for their matchup. And so is Bruce Larson. It's the Funny Cars coming up next at the U.S. National. Black Rock, Nevada and old Milwaukee both mean something great to these guys. Black Rock means land sailing, riding the wind across dry desert lakes. And old Milwaukee means a great beer, cold, crisp old Milwaukee beer and smooth, golden old Milwaukee light. There's nothing like the flavor of a special place, an Old Milwaukee beer. Old Milwaukee and Old Milwaukee Light. You know, guys, it doesn't get any better than this. This is how a Ferrari Testarossa looks on the road. And this is how a Ferrari Testarossa looks to the road, where it ultimately responds through the contact patch of its Goodyear Eagle tires. The exclusive tires chosen by Ferrari 
for every Testarossa sold in America. Goodyear Eagles, because there really is a difference. If you want a little muscle in your car, forget your old routine. You gotta pump up. Super Clean Premium. Performance power from Philips 66. It's the same thing every Saturday. He puts on those old blue jeans and goes out with that old dog. And he's gone all day. He says he's going to bring back dinner. But all he ever brings back is that old dog. Here's to old dogs. Saturday mornings in comfortable blue jeans. Wrangler. Super Group Exile reminds us what great country music is all about. Woke up in love with you. Oh, days. Am I still it's a full house performance of Exile's greatest hits. Won't you give us just one more chance? Maybe we can make a little romance. No reason why you and me can't get it back together. Like Exile in concert, Friday at 8 Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, only on TNN. As always at the U.S. Nationals, an overflow crowd full of enthusiasm for what's to come. And right now, back in the pit area, Paul Page has this report. This is the rocker arm after Eddie Hill's second round victory. And when that breaks, you get some real expensive parts, especially the push rod itself. Now, the push rod is supposed to be straight. Well, there's what it looks like now. As a result of this, Fuzzy Carter and the crew are overworking on the engine. They have to repair the rocker arm assembly on the left bank of the engine and get it put back together before they fire up for the semi-final challenge. And a challenge they are up against, none other than Daryl Gwynn. Right now, it's bunny card time. Round number two, Bruce Larson, the big story this year. He leads the Winston points against Ed McCullough, who has got his combination together. Maynard Yanks, the crew chief on the Larson car, a man who, oddly enough, came out of modified and sprint car racing in the Northeast and has fallen in love with what they call sport racing, drag racing. And he will face the defending U.S. Nationals funny card champion from Hemet, California, Ed McCullough, who has two victories so far this season. Of course, the crew chief there is Bernie Federley. They come up against the current points leader, that's Bruce Larson, out of Dauphine, Pennsylvania, with four victories so far this year. And you've already been introduced to his crew chief, Maynard Yanks, who keeps track of that car on the line and burns the wrenches along with the crew. Anyone who thought that Bruce Larson was a fluke, including myself at the beginning of the year, can certainly take notice that he is definitely in this hunt and keeps getting stronger with every round. Well, he better be strong. Ed McCullough with a brilliant start. McCullough nailed Larson on the light, but Larson powers right by. 532 wins it to a 546. On the starting line again, Paul. This track is really holding up for some super races today. What do you think there? Uh, yeah, we were concerned that it might be going away. Uh, it seems a little better than I thought it was going to be. We had a little bit soft for that run. McCullough hopped off the line ahead of you. Yeah, he got out on us, but uh, we've been running pretty steady and pretty consistent all week here. Still going to have to climb a bit if you want to get in that final round, don't you think? Well, we're taking it around at a time. All right, good luck. Yeah. Well, Maynard better keep the power up on that engine because if Larson continues to go to sleep on the line like that, it's going to take a lot of power to get by these guys. Boy, I bet with that whole shot that McCullough put on Larson there, every driver in this point hunt was smiling in the pits, but they weren't smiling long. Watch the power of that benched motor come on as he puts that car right out in front of Ed McCullough, adding another 200 to his points lead. What a performance. Bruce Larson. What makes this machine so perfect? A 532, a terrific run straight. It does the same thing every time. I guess it's the man working on the clutch. I think it means an awful lot. That guy's terrific. That's Maynard Yingst. The man behind the wheel isn't bad either. Well, I get the job done. <laughs> Bruce Larson goes to the semis. What an automobile. What a race team. And I wonder if he's going to be smiling that much when he takes a look at the time slip and sees his reaction time. Some improvement definitely needed there. Back up to the starting line. 
the lane choice taking the near lane once again is Mike Dunn as he is ready to face Tony McCallum and to no one's surprise Mike Dunn has top speed of the U.S. Nationals for the funny car breed at 278 miles per hour a car with a huge top end charge they're trying to find some elapsed time now he's up against Tony McCollum a young driver with a very young crew chief who qualified in the 15th spot a real credit to Wayne Dupree who cruised his car out of Baton Rouge Louisiana qualified at 553 up against round number one that young team ran into John Forrest a veteran from Yorba Linda California with one of the big names in the toolbox department, Austin Goyle working for it. And this was that first round confrontation. Tony McCollum in the near lane, John Forrest in the far lane, and we rode with John Forrest. You know, Steve, everybody's always asked me, what does it feel like? This is the closest thing I can tell you that it feels like to ride one of these cars. Well, John Forrest knew he had lost traction, and he watched Tony McCollum streak by. So with that victory in round number one, it set up this fight with Ontario, California's Mike Dunn. Two victories to his credit this year, in no small part due to the work of his crew chief, Gary Slutter. Certainly two of the most beautiful funny cars you will ever see. Mike Dunn, near lane, Tony McCollum in the far lane, both drivers out of Southern California. Beautiful start. McCollum has problems. Mike Dunn. 535. That puts him right in the program with a best of 278 miles per hour. Another tremendous top speed. So while action continues on the line in Funny Car, back in the top fuel pits, Wayne Cannon massages some of the pistons on Joe Amato's car as they search for ET. They're coming up in a semifinal round confrontation against Dick LaHaye. The LaHaye crew. Kim LaHaye in charge is working for their semifinal round as well. We'll be back with more Funny Car at the U.S. Nationals after this. Well, it's about time. You never kept me waiting when you were kids. There's an animal in the kitchen. Hey, sugar bear! <laughs> Baron Bowles and a super golden crisp cereal. Oh, this stuff reminds me of the best years of my life. Excuse me. Oh, got my sports page? New York beat L.A., but nothing beats my honey sweet wheat. You remember that song you used to sing? I can't get enough of Super Golden Crisp. Don't quit your day job. <laughs> Breakfast is still better with the bear. Oh, how do you do that? It's here where a man really meets his match. From the tug of the line to the feel of the steel. It's here where heroes hold on to a dream. Folks, I want to tell you about the great deal Ralph and I got. The Opryland USA Passport. For just $54.70 plus tax, we see it all and save 20%. We get a one-of-a-kind day cruise aboard the General Jackson Showboat. Howdy. Admission to a grand old Opry matinee. A tour with the people who really know Nashville. Grand old Opry sightseeing tours. We get to see music, 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 starring pretty Miss Brenda Lee. Oh, bumpity, 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 I think she likes me. And we get three days at the Great Opryland Show Park. Oh, and it includes a live taping of Nashville Now, which is where we're going if I can just get Ralphie off of this ride. Ralph, it's time to go. Ralph, that's for kids only. Get off that ride. Ralph. The Opryland Ralph. USA Passport is just $54.70 plus tax. So call 615-889-6611 for yours today. Ralphie, they're waiting for us. They can't start without you. 
We're back at the 35th NHRA U.S. Nationals, and while John Force is out of the running, he never lets down, still spending time for a few photographs and autographs with the race fans. Now, not long ago, the Diamond Peak cameras spent some time at home with this most versatile driver. The baby dipped on me, hooked the nose, and what a ride. Yeah, 6 o'clock, my wife, we're trying to induce labor right now. She's overdue, and I, I got to get home since I hugged this crew. And I, I knew I cut a light, and, and the... the uh, Brain quit. Brain quit. Wait a minute. I, I saw the line. It's a far cry from the sounds and fury of the track to the serene and peaceful Yorba Linda, California setting where John Forrest has made a home for himself, his wife Lori, and their daughters Ashley, Brittany, and Courtney. Surprisingly, his home also serves as a repository for a burgeoning collection of antiques purchased by virtue of a typical John Forrest philosophy. I know they're expensive, and they got King Louie on them, and they gotta be old, and that's the way I buy. But it's not those antiques that make a house a home. It's the family. The home becomes a sanctuary. It's, it's a, it is a chance to get home and change your lifestyle for a few weeks and, and be with the kids. Uh, myself, I grew up in a trailer house. Uh, uh, three brothers and a sister. There was five of us total. And mom and dad, and, and my dad, the first time he saw my house, he said, geez, we could put our trailer in the living room. I really don't get to enjoy it much. But I know that, I know that the family has it, and that's what's important. First thing I do when I get home is I clean up what's been left. Anything that the dog's done that the kids didn't get through or cleaning out the garage or pulling weeds, I get right into that real quick. Read my mail at midnight till four in the morning to go through that. And early in the morning, I'm back into the business of getting organized for the week because I only got a few days. A lot of times I've told him, I've talked to you more on the phone when you were back east than I have the whole week you've been here because he's still putting deals together um, and organizing like a three-ring circus almost. And so uh, he's trying to walk a fine line between his racing career and being at home with the family, but he still is a good dad when he comes home. And then it's pizza time for the kids. We got our little places we go. But he keeps the kids up till midnight. We try to catch yes. a movie if we can. Naps are all disrupted. Uh, we don't go to the park because we have a park. The dinner hour is any hour. If there's a new tape, we'll sit down and get a pizza and we'll watch it late into the night. And so it's anything goes. Well, we like roll over on the bed and he, um, my sister Brittany plays with us too. And I'm like, if she gets caught in dad's arms, because we pretend that dad's the monster, and then if she gets in, in dad's arms and gets caught, I jump on him and he falls off of her. And then I save her, because cause Brittany and we are the buddies of, on the team. For a man who's at ease rocketing down the track at 280 miles per hour, it must be nice to escape to the serenity of a normal home life. Whoa, Max. <laughs> that baby dipped on me, hooked the nose, and what a ride. John Forrest, like most of the NHRA professionals, a study in contrast. John also proves it's not whether you win or lose, it's how you treat those fans that what really counts. Absolutely, John Forrest is a one-off. Okay, here we go. Round two of Funny Car Eliminations continuing, and there is the man who has made the headline so far here at the U.S. Nationals. Don Perdome, his Pontiac-bodied automobile, the all-time quickest run ever seen in the breed at 5.17 seconds. And Steve, here on the line, it's Buster Couch, who has run the Christmas tree, the official starter for all of the U.S. Nationals, all the way back to 1963. In fact, he goes back to when they used to use the flags to get him off of the line. And don't let that smile fool you. Buster Couch takes no prisoners on the starting line. You play by his rules. Scott Coletta knows that very well. Out of Ypsilanti, Michigan, second-generation drag racer, and his crew chief, who else? But the first-generation, Connie Coletta. They qualified at 547. And talk about your tough draws in round number two. It will be Coletta against the four-time Winston champ, Don Perdome, and his crew chief, Mike Clover. Now, yesterday afternoon, in a race within a race, it was happier times for John Forrest. He faced off with Don Perdome in the final of the Big Bud shootout. The eight best funny cars in the land had been narrowed down to these two cars. Forrest had a good start, but Perdome, better performance, as you see, through the fourth left-hand side window. Don Perdome clocked a 5.19 seconds and took up $50,000. He got out of his car and immediately walked to Wally Parks, the founder and chairman of the board of the National Heartbeat Association. It was a nice moment. 
So buoyed by that victory in the Big Bud shootout, here is Don Perdome, the number one qualifier in funny car round number two against Scott Coletta. Perdome, like most of the competitors, has chosen that near lane. And for good reason, too. Look at Coletta. Smoke the tires immediately. And look at Perdome. 526. 272 miles per hour, continuing his incredible performance. Let's go to the starting line, Paul Page. Mike, a 526, not nearly that 517. What do you think? Oh, the 26, a real good run for here today. Uh, the racetrack's not quite as good as it was yesterday. The air's not quite as good. And uh, this race is a little bit longer than a Bud shootout, and you got to be a little more careful. We're just trying to be conservative, get the car in the final round so we have a shot at winning the race. What do you think the, the factor of lane choice is going to play in the final round? Well, right now, the lanes are pretty even. It'll depend on... Uh, the cars behind us, what they do to the racetrack, when somebody breaks the motor, some of the other categories, and how nice they are to the racetrack. Uh, clouds are out. The track should get better later today. That's what we're hoping for. Let's hope that happens, Mike. Good luck. Thank you. I imagine he does hope that because a car that can turn 517 has got enough power to spin the tires at any time. And on the line, the matchup that will determine who will face Bruce Larson in the semifinal round. Will it be Chuck Etchells? or Tom Hoover. Hoover is snuck into this round at the last minute as a 16th qualifier. Etchells is number 12. Now, let's go to the far end. Like all of the funny car drivers and crews, I am at a loss for words to describe Don Perdome's performance. I hope you've got something to say, a 526. Well, it's great, yeah. Was, you know, we just need to keep it running consistent, Steve. You know, we've just, you know, things have been a pretty good so far. Whoa, pretty you know, good. You know, we, we like to set that national record, but we're not uh, we're not stepping on it too hard. We're just trying to play it cool. Did you back it down after yesterday, 17 and 19? Yes, we really have to. It's uh, it's just really uh, really hard on the drivetrain and everything. So we're just trying to nurse along till we really need it. See you in the summer. Thank you. So Don Perdome walks carefully toward what may be another U.S. Nationals victory. In the meantime, up at the starting line, Tom Hoover brings the machine back in the lanes. He qualified number 16, and he made it to this round as a result of a fascinating confrontation in round number one. Indeed, Paul, it was Tom Hoover, Maple Grove, Minnesota. The engines under the hood of his funny car built by his 80-year-old father, George Hoover. What a story that is, and what a story this was. Hoover was up against Kenny Bernstein, the four-time and reigning Winston champ from Dallas, Texas. He and his crew chief, Dale Armstrong, hoped to be the first team to win five funny car titles, eclipsing Don Perdome, who likewise has four. But earlier today, with Bernstein in the near lane, Hoover in the far lane, that was not to be. Kenny had the advantage, suddenly spoke the tires. I doubt that they thought Hoover was capable of a 542. He indeed was. Kenny Bernstein going out round number one here, and Larson progressing through the field. Well, that could be catastrophic to his chances. Chuck Etchells, however, on the brighter side, is enjoying his finest drag racing weekend ever. The driver from Connecticut with longtime veteran Paul Smith is the crew chief, qualified number 12 at 547, and now will match wheels with Tom Hoover. Tom Hoover on the near side, that lane that has held up so well throughout the competition. It's a good start. Hoover smokes the tires and then goes into a power wheel stand. Chuck Etchells powers his way to a 555, 266 mile per hour victory. He'll go to the semifinals, the furthest he has ever been in any trade national event competition. And in fact, that does set up the semifinals. Bruce Larson will have lane choice over Chuck Etchells, and the other half of the semis will find Don Prudhomme, who has lane choice over the entire field. He'll be up against the man with top speed, Mike Dunn. In the meantime, back in the top fuel pits, Daryl Gwen's crew works on his car as they are ready for their fight against Eddie Hill in the top fuel semifinal round. We'll be back with more from the 35th NHRA U.S. National. John Madden on defense. Hey, there's nothing like a new car. But to fight wear in today's advanced engine, the best offense is a super defense. Superflow motor oil. For protection here, boom, multi-valve engines, boom, overhead cams, and double boom to protect your investment. Superflow motor oil, a super defense for today's advanced engines. Go with the flow, go with Superflow. I feel good. 
Time to go, boys. You've been in there long enough. Hey, we're not even tired. Though so I've checked the mileage and it's... Hey, where are the auto lights? We're guaranteed. Guaranteed? Feel good. Yeah, two years, no matter how far we go. But no spark plug guarantees that. We do. So good. Yeah, we're the auto lights. I... So go pull the plug on somebody else. Okay. <laughs> the Suzuki New Year celebration. Right now, you can buy a Suzuki Quad Runner with no money down and make no payments till 1990. The sooner you buy, the more fun you'll have before your first payment. Start the New Year right with the Suzuki Quad Runner New Year celebration. More play before you pay. It's the Suzuki New Year celebration. No money down and no payment till after New Year's Day. Peerless do-it-yourself faucets come with the total faucet and finish warranty. No other faucet warranty can beat it. In other words, the Peerless warranty really holds water. Now through October 14th, get $5 back. Country Balladeer Don Williams in his first television special with featured guests Doc Watson and Bailey and the Boys. Don Williams, live from Tucson. Tuesday, 10.30 p.m. Eastern, 7.30 Pacific on TNN. We're back in Indianapolis, Indiana at the U.S. Nationals. Meet Steve Yanks, the young son of Maynard Yanks. He's not at all concerned with the competition of the day, but his dad doing what he does best, working on the clutch in Bruce Larson's machine as they prepare for their semifinal round confrontation. And down the way at Don Perdome's pit, Steve Evans is with another heavyweight for motorsports. We'll talk about your special guest. Look who I found. Four-time Indy champ, A.J. Foyt. The last time I saw you around the drags, I think it was 20 years ago. That's probably right. 20 years ago right here is the day after we come back from Decoin. My, how it's changed. It really has. I mean, it's amazing, and the technology when these cars and beautiful cars, and actually as fast as they run, still is safe. I think today they're a lot safer than they were 20 years ago. Well, I'd have to agree with that. You know, there seems to be a thread now through all of motorsports. A sprint car driver was a sprint car driver. We're fans of each other's uh, occupations. Well, that's true. I mean, a lot of it, you know, uh, it's just been so much different through the years that it's really hard to put it together. And just like I was out here, Art Crispin and, you know, Tom McEwen and, you know, like Perdone, I've been friends for years. And when he's around the Indy cars, uh, May and that, he comes and sees me. So we go see each other whenever we can. But uh, like I say, it's great to be out here and look at some of the new cars, how beautiful they are. It's great to have you. Thank you. AJ's right, it's not uncommon at the Indianapolis 500 to see Perdome standing over there in the pits. Well, we're ready for Pro Stock, round number two. Well, 25 years ago, around the time of AJ Foyt's last visit here, the top fuel dragsters were running about the same performance as the Pro Stocks do now. Don Beverly from Chester, Virginia, in his Oldsmobile, will meet up in this round with Butch Leo, long renowned for his starting line expertise out of Blackwood, Ohio, Leo with the Pontiac. Now, these are gasoline-burning automobiles. There's no fuel injection. They're big four-barrel carburetors. They weigh 2,350 pounds. The engine limitation is 500 cubic inches. And the real research, development, and hard work for these teams happens in their race shops. They dyno these engines, mold them in, and come here and kind of run what they brought. Beautiful start by Leo. Hasn't lost any of that starting line touch, but watch the horsepower on Beverly. Motor right by him. It is Don Beverly. What a thrill for him to beat Butch Leo with a 743 to Leo 749. They had uh, equal horsepower on the top end. Both ran 185 miles per hour. Pro stock competition. Some of the closest racing that you'll find in NHRA drag racing. Up on the line, Larry Morgan, who is having a great race weekend at the U.S. Nationals as he's ready to take on Gary Brown. And what a force Oldsmobile has become in NHRA Pro Stock Drag Racing. In fact, last year, they won the coveted Manufacturer's Cup. And we have another pair of them here. Gary Brown from Buford, Georgia, also the owner of Atlanta Dragway, the scene of one of NHRA's national events. And Larry Morgan of Newark, Ohio. Boy, I'll tell you, he should be wearing a, even a broader smile than that because yesterday, in the final round of the Mr. Gaskin first Pro Stock Challenge, it was Larry Morgan against Warren Johnson. Morgan was in the near lane, on the line, $50,000 to the winner, and it was Larry Morgan. 
There was total jubilation on the starting line. Car owner Bob Pinella and crew from California celebrating certainly Larry Morgan's biggest victory in their old mobile pro stock. And celebrating as well was Larry's two-week-old baby, Nicholas James. Of course, as they say, that was all yesterday. Larry Morgan is back with all that erased. Now it is Brown that he faces. Morgan to the near lane, Brown to the far side. Oh, and Brown gambled in the far lane left way too soon. There's a red light on the Christmas tree. Automatic disqualification. The second car across the stripe has won here in the second round and heads for the semis. Larry Morgan still undefeated at the U.S. Nationals. Larry Morgan really has become a factor in his pro stock racing. Wouldn't you agree, Steve? Absolutely. He heads up their engine development as well as driving the car. Boy, here's a man who's won four races, Bruce Allen in the Rare and Morrison Beretta. And up against Bruce will be one of the real crowd favorites because of the uniqueness of the automobile. The only Dodge Daytona in all of pro stock racing, Daryl Alderman. And you'll remember that they won the Gator Nationals back in March of this year, the first Dodge to do so in about a decade. But, Paul, if you look at the elapsed times recorded so far, you'd have to give the nod to this man, Bruce Allen. Well, Allen does come into this event as the number one qualifier. It's the Chevrolet matchup against Daryl Alderman's Daytona. And there is a large Chevrolet contingent here as well, pulling for Bruce Allen. And Daryl Alderman, so many times, his whole shot at his way to victory, second only maybe to Butch Leal. It is Alderman away first. Alderman making a race out of this. He might win it. No. By a spoiler on the front bumper, it is Bruce Allen, 737 to Alderman, 744. But an advantage of four hundreds off the starting line made it almost a dead heat. And Steve, here at the starting line, well, we may just be seeing history in the making. On board with Bob Glidden. If he scores the win today, it will be his 75th. Unprecedented. Here, though, he still has to get past Warren Johnson. Well, any time you race Warren Johnson these days, you've got to know you've got a serious competitor in the other lane, running better than he has in a couple of seasons. Any time you race Bob Glidden at the U.S. Nationals, well, he's been in the finals 12 years in a row. That tells you something. Shouldn't surprise me. He just lives down the road. He can drive home at night, live at home, work in his shop. It's a perfect place for him. And I'll tell you, he dearly loves this race, as we all do. Warren Johnson in the near lane. He has been tough as of late, and he loves to pick on Bob Glidden. These two do not get along on or off the racetrack. You're in the Ford Probe Automobile. Glidden keeping it perfectly straight. Rusty Glidden cheering him on along with his brother Billy, and it is Bob Glidden going to the semifinals. A 740 at 186 miles per hour and a beautiful starting line lead. So Bob Glidden marches ahead. Will we see some history made here today? Well, at the U.S. Nationals, the pairing for the semifinal round in pro stock will put Glidden against Don Beverly. Glidden will have his choice of lanes, and Larry Morgan will take on Bruce Allen. Allen will have that all-important lane choice at the U.S. Nationals. In the meantime, Dick LaHaye watches as they push his top fuel dragster through a giant crowd here back in the pits at the U.S. National. Everybody's welcome, and they enjoy their time with the racers. But coming up very shortly, it will be the semifinal round in top fuel as LaHaye is ready to face Joe Amato. We'll be back. At BIC, we've been studying all the ways that you pull and stretch your face in search of a better shave. Now BIC presents our solution, introducing the new BIC Metal Shaver. The patented BIC Metal stretches and smooths your skin thanks to its unique metal guard bar, so the shaver glides closely and comfortably. Now, instead of stretching, start reaching for a new BIC Metal Shaver. It stretches your skin for a better shave, and that's no stretch. Take good care of your car, but forget your brakes. Might as well do this. Keep it running like a top, but neglect your brakes? Might as well get it over with now. Bendix brakes pass tougher tests than any law requires, so think about Bendix. But ignore your brakes? Okay. Bendix brakes. The sooner, the better. Pulling in the USA. Pulling in the USA. How do you get the good times rolling? You get your friends together and go bowling. It's great fun anytime. Call ahead to be sure open lanes are available for you and your friends. So make your plans now. Bowling, bowling, bowling in the USA. 
Catch the action. Watch Bowling World on ESPN. Check your local program listings for times in your area. You're, You're watching, watching TNN. TNN. You might have forgotten that. Because you ain't heard no country music today. Here's a little something to tide you over. One step forward and two steps back. A long, a long shot, shot at love is better than no shot. Cause South's gonna do it again. That ought to hold you for a while. Now, would you do us a favor? Password, 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 my friend. Good things happen on TNN. Crude banners in the grandstands have become a fixture in most sporting events. Nothing crude about the Joe Amato cheering section's artwork, and it is time for what they call the Dick and Joe Show. Joe Amato against Dick LaHaye. Here is Jerry Amato guiding Joe back. What's going through his mind right now, Don? Well, I think the main thing in his mind, he's racing the biggest race in the world, and his car has not performed on race day like it should. He is wondering, has Tim Richards got that engine to come around? And Dick LaHaye, he has accomplished four second performance here this weekend. Uh, the biggest problem there is you, you can't get greedy because the conditions aren't the same now. That's right, and on a four second car, the least mistake, and you're up in smoke. All right, the delicate staging process begins, nudging those very small front wheels, pioneered by Don Garlitz, incidentally, into the electronic beams, blast the stage the way he likes it is LaHaye. It's a model away first. Amato loses traction. Dick LaHaye, oh my, one of the most impressive runs of the day. Five, zero, one elapsed time, 280 miles per hour. Amato, too much power done? That's right, Amato had to give it his best shot. He knew that LaHaye was going to make a good run. Jimmy Amato smokes the tires. You're a 501. That looks awful good. Yeah, yeah, we're real happy with that. Uh, I was expecting it to run. Right around that, we uh, hopped the motor up a little bit and put some clutch in it, and the track's right there, so hopefully we'll do good in the final. You've had a clean day so far. You think that's quick enough to give you lane choice? I don't know. Daryl's been running for us. I hope so. We'll see here in a few minutes. All right, good luck. Thank you. You can tell by the look on Kim's face and her voice that they're very concerned about smoking the tires. They came here to win this race, generally. They're very conservative, but they are tired of being bridesmaids. Well, Eddie Hill rolls out as he is set at the starting line to take on this man, Darrell Gwen, who is really charging his way up through the ranks. The onboard camera, Doug Parr and Mike Sherrill doing a magnificent job producing these pictures this weekend. Let's go to the far end of the strip now. Here's Steve Evans. What a shot. 501. Oh, Lord, thank you. I'll tell you what. <laughs> You know, this has been a heck of a weekend. It? We run our first four, and I figured Joe and I was really going to have us race, and we tuned her up a little bit to race him. Joe tuned it up a little bit, too, maybe a little too much, huh, Joe? Race, that good race. I'll tell you. You know, it's this guy right here, it's the Dick and Joe show a lot of times. And just yeah, one time we didn't. Side by side like, that time, that's okay, know. man, you know. Maybe that's the next time. Hey, good luck. Thank you. Great sports. Dick LaHaye and Joe Amato. And what a relief for Gary Ormsby in the points fight to see Amato out. At the starting line, there's Jerry Gwen as he looks down to his son, Daryl Gwen, strapped into his top fuel dragster, ready to take on Eddie Hill. You have raced Daryl Gwen in what two U.S. Nationals top fuel championship battles? You beat him both times. What's the difference in him now and then, Don Garlic? Well, I think he's a lot more experienced. He's a lot calmer. He doesn't get rattled so much. He's a much better top fuel racer today than he was in those days. And there's Eddie Hill with a car he calls an antique. There's no, nothing antique about the elapsed times that he has accomplished with this machine. Let's go for a ride. Oh, and what a race it was. Eddie Hill off the mark first, almost pulled it out, but it's Daryl Gwynn at 504 to Hill's 5.09 elapsed time. Typical U.S. Nationals competition. Nice going, an 04 though. That's a little bit slower. It's not well, going to give you lane choice. Right, that, that is wrong. We didn't mean to do that. We just meant to try and maintain, which was probably the wrong thing to do, but we didn't expect LaHaye to step up quite that quick. Still, you're going to the final round. And we do have a little left. All right, good luck. Thank you. Ken Vinny being very conservative with a Gwen Carr, not wanting to smoke the tires, wanting to get to that finals. We watch the replay, we see Eddie Hill put two hundreds right into the bank with a starting line advantage, but it didn't last long. The Vinny engine came on with lots of power and he begins to take a definite advantage as we get to mid-track. 
The old car performed well for Hill, though. And as a result of that competition, the stage is set for the final round at the U.S. National. Daryl Gwen will face Dick LaHaye, and LaHaye will have lane choice. Boy, Daryl Gwen has just got no respect as a new national record holder. Everybody you race just fires a shot at you. Well, it's a U.S. National, Steve, like yeah, I right. said before, and uh, I understand we ran 504. We don't have lane choice in the final, but uh, we're going to give it our best shot, right lane or left lane. As the afternoon cools off, lane choice is not going to be as important, traditionally. Exactly right, and uh, traditionally, when the sun goes down, this car becomes awesome. You've been beaten in the final before. You're not going to let that happen again. Yeah, I've been runner-up here three times. I'm about sick and tired of that. Okay, we'll see you then. Daryl Gwynn, will he break that streak here today as he goes over to shake hands with Eddie Hill? In the meantime, back in the staging lane, it's the funny cars that begin to inch forward. Mike Dunn is ready as we have funny car semifinals next. There's some psycho woman out there killing guys. I know how we catch her. Your guy put an ad in the singles magazine, right? We put in our own ad. He went undercover to catch a killer. I believe in animal attraction. I believe in this. Now he's either found the love of his life. She's a suspect, Frank. Or the end of it. What are you looking for? Huh? Al Pacino. Don't you move! Sea of Love, rated R. Now playing at a theater near you. There are a number of ways to get a safer ride, like always fasten your feet belt. Feet belt? And never ride on worn shocks and struts. They can allow your tires to lose contact with the road, resulting in a loss of control and braking. Get a new set of Monroe Gasmatic shocks and struts. They help your vehicle hold the road. Hey, I feel safer already. How do I? For a smoother, safer ride, America rides Monroe. Got it? Got it. You got it? Got it. Do you got it? Got it. You got it. Don't run. He don't got it. The tough Dodge Ram pickup. Built like the proverbial brick. We got it. Apartment house. Roaches. For everyone you see, there can be 200 more hiding and multiplying behind your walls. Fact, there's only one way to handle a problem like that. Orkin. With over 85 years of proven experience and the only nationwide money-back guarantee in the pest control business. That's why more people in more places call Orkin more than anybody else in the world. Call Orkin today for any pest problem you have. We could be all the protection you'll ever need. You know, every time I put my 60 minutes pace on and really, you know, go after a drag racing story, really dig down deep, when I get there, there always seems to be somebody in one of these shirts. National Dragster, NHRA's weekly newspaper. This is the editor, Phil Burgess. This isn't fair. There's only one of me. How many of you are there? Well, covering this U.S. National, Steve, we got five reporters and eight photographers, so we get a good chance to get around. And it seems like you finish the race, get home, and National Dragster's already in your mailbox if you're an NHRA member. How do you do it so fast? Well, we take the first plane out of here. Two days later, we're done with the coverage. It's at the printer and on the way to the readers. Well, I'm sure I'll see you again before the day's over. I'll be there first, Steve. <laughs> I don't know about that. You know, you really should be a member of NHRA if you want to be inside drag racing. The prime benefit is National Dragster, 48 weeks a year. And you can join at a very special price. And if you do it right now, they'll even throw in a copy of the multi-award-winning home video, Decade of Thrill. So call this number and become part of the world's largest motorsport sanctioning body. They even put out some special editions of National Dragster here at the U.S. Nationals on an almost daily basis. On the line, the semifinals in Funny Car. The near lane is Bruce Larson. The far side is Chuck Etchells as Buster Couch moves both cars into position. Chuck Etchells has absolutely nothing going for him in this contest on Garlitz, except maybe luck on his side. And sometimes luck is better than speed. Well, I've heard that said. They leave right together. Etchells just doesn't have the power to run with Bruce Larson. Few do, thanks to that man, Maynard Yanks. It is Larson heading for the finals at 5.33, 273. 
He is having a tremendous day, and Paul is with his crew chief. Man at a 5.33 puts you into the final round. What do you have to do? Well, I'm glad we're in the final. Uh, I don't know. Uh, the snake's been running pretty good all day. If he gets by done like he's got by everybody else, uh, we're going to really have to lean on this thing for the final. All right, that's what the U.S. Nationals is, though. Dr drama in the final. Got to go for the throat. You got it. Maynard is certainly right about that because Perdome is taking no prisoners today. Well, Don Mike Cobra and the crew have the engine fired in Don Perdome's car. The top goes down, and he is ready to face the fastest man thus far in the competition, Mike Dunn. But speed makes no difference now. It's E.T. that counts, and Perdome is definitely in control of that situation. So Don Perdome rolls up for his burnout, a man who has here announced that he will end his funny car career this year and move over to the top fuel racks. That announcement was also made here by Kenny Bernstein. So two of the biggest names in the sport, Perdome and Bernstein, moving up to top fuel for the 1990 NHRA season. Let's go down to the far end. Here again is Steve Evans. There may be some concern on the part of Bruce Larson. Before the body is lowered down, you can see there is oil all over the inside of this car. The first time we have seen that in a long, long time. Bruce, what's the deal? I don't know. I haven't figured it out. Uh, it didn't feel bad. 533, it didn't run bad. Yeah, so uh, we'll be ready for the next round, even if we have to put an engine in it. You heard it here. They've got plenty of bullets. Well, if, in fact, they do have to change that engine, that's going to mean a lot of work for Maynard Yankston and the crew. And the other half of the semis, two drivers who have tasted victory here at the U.S. Nationals in the past, Mike Dunn and Don Perdome. They are pre-staged. Everybody knows that Perdome likes to stage last, and they usually let him do it so they don't build too much heat. Mike Dunn is not moving, Don Garland. Well, he evidently came into this round plenty cool, so he decided he's going to stage last. The snake continues to sit there. Finally, Dunn breaks the snake. He moves in. Dunn doesn't hesitate. And we've got to start. Perdome with his concentration broken a little bit is laid off the mark. Oh, but he's got the power to make up for it. A breathless crew back in the starting line as Don runs a 527, 271 mile per hour charge to Mike Dunn's game and smart 539. Dunn had absolutely nothing to lose with Perdome's advantage in the elapsed time department, so he just waited till the last. Well, it paid off to a full 600 starting line advantage, and sometimes that will win a race for you. Dunn had hoped that Perdome would make some kind of mistake, and he did. He was late, but he still had the power to win at the top. So it'll be a terrific final in Funny Car. Bruce Larson faces Don Perdome. Perdome has the lane choice. He's with Steve. Don, I can't help but ask why you would sit pre-stage that long when you really had everything to lose and uh, what to gain from it. Well, they're screwing with me is what they're doing because our car's running good. They just don't want to race heads up. You know, they want to make me go in there and wait and cook my engine or whatever they can do to beat you. You know, no big deal. Still smoked him off. Indeed, you did a 527. Yes, thank you very much. Where in the rule book does it say Perdome is supposed to stage second? He's got his own copy, Don. Bob Glidden back in the staging lanes with his grandson, Brandon. All the family is here from nearby Whiteland. We'll be back. Super Group Exile reminds us what great country music is all about. Woke up in love with you. Oh, it's a full house performance of Exile's greatest hits. Won't you give us just one more chance? Maybe we can make a little romance. No reason why you and me can't get it back together. Like Exile in concert, Friday at 8 Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, only on TNN. Monster Truck Class. This is the video you've been waiting for. This is Bigfoot, King of the Monster Truck. 60 minutes of non-stop monster truck action that will blow you away. It's all new. Brand new. You'll see it all from car-crushing heroics to dangerous monster truck rollovers. Heart-pounding wheel stand. Monster truck drag racing. Hill climb. Music videos and Bigfoot deep in the mud. Witness the first car crush ever and ride in the cab with Bigfoot as he pours on the power. Plus, much, much more. Nothing stops this giant muscle machine as he flies 
race through the air, jumping cars and smashing everything in his way. This is the video that everyone's talking about. This is the ultimate in monster truck excitement. This is Bigfoot, king of the monster trucks. This offer not available in stores, so order yours today. today, today. Have your charge card ready and call now, 1-800-238-9300 to get your copy of Bigfoot, king of the monster trucks, for $24.95 plus shipping and handling. Call now and get a Bigfoot cap free. Offer not available in stores, so call now, 1-800-238-9300. It's incredible. Well, this entire U.S. Nationals has gone absolutely perfect for Bruce Larson until now. This is the engine he won with in the semifinals. We saw no smoke, we saw no fire. But apparently, just as he shut the engine off, it broke a connecting rod internally, the worst thing that can happen to one of these engines. So, the clutch is coming off that engine. They will they already have taken the blower and injector off, and there is the new bullet, as they like to call them, that'll go in the frame rails of this race car. But it needs an awful lot of attention. Oftentimes, the spare motors have cylinder heads already on them and a lot of other components. They're really building a short block here. We're building from a short block, and it appears that they'll have time to get that accomplished if the crew is really on their game. Even some of Amato's crew over to help swap that motor. Now, of course, an engine swap is in the contingency, but it is certainly something that they do not want to do if they don't have to. Up on the starting line, Bob Glidden, ready to face Don Beverly, on board with Glidden. Ken Glidden here in the semifinals make his 13th consecutive final round of the U.S. Nationals. Don Beverly hopes to have something to say about that in the Oldsmobile. Oldsmobile against the sleek Ford Probe. There is no pro stocker more aerodynamic than the machine we're riding with. Glidden pulls high gear, but Steve here on the starting line. It's a big red light in Beverly's lane. Glidden has the win. And he has it. At 7.39 seconds, 187 miles per hour, to Beverly's foul starting 7.52. I wonder if Bob thought maybe he was beaten there. Probably did until he looked down the strip and saw his scoreboard came on for the win, but he would still make a hard run for late choice in the final. So Bob Glidden moves into the final round, and who will he face? Will it be this man, Larry Morgan, who has the lane choice over his opposition, Bruce Allen? And hopes to get a shot at this man, Bob Glidden, who when he came around the turn was already celebrating, Paul, so uh, he did indeed know that he had won that matchup with the Beverly. And he could be on his way to history, a 75th Nationals victory. But who will he face? Bruce Allen or Larry Morgan? That's Allen on the far side. Morgan inches up on the near side. Pro stock, the semifinal round. The engines will come up to about 6,000 RPM and rev to about 8,000 RPM down the racetrack. Morgan is in. They leave identically. The same reaction time for both drivers. What a pro stock contest. Oh. By a whisker, it's Oldsmobile in the near lane. Larry Morgan continues his domination of the U.S. Nationals at 740 to a 743. Larry Morgan has been taking a starting line advantage on almost every round that he has run at the U.S. Nationals. And add that to the fact that the car has had excellent ETs, makes him one of the top contenders here this year. And Allen is one of the tough ones that he had to take out to get into that final round. And you couldn't ask for a nicer drag race. Look at that margin of victory. But Morgan goes into the final round where he will face Bob Glidden. But Bob Glidden has that all-important lane choice. Here's Steve. You know, in uh, the not-too-distant future, you have an incredible task. You have to face a man named Bob Glidden, who's been in this final round the last 12 years. Well, I'll tell you what, I hope this is his last one. I mean, I know he's been in the final. I hope this is the last one he wins. I hope I can change that. Well, you gave him lane choice now. You're 40, his 39. That's okay. I rolled the lights pretty bad. I felt, I feel I can get down either lane. I think both lanes are equal right now. I'm just real happy to be in the final. Racing Glidden doesn't affect you psychologically at all, knowing that it's him. It doesn't bother me at all. In fact, I'd like to race him. Though. When he raced me at home, he beat me. He's in trouble now. <laughs> There's a man out to stop Bob Glidden from winning that 75th. That's the kind of confidence that it takes to win a drag race. In the meantime, back in the funny car pits, they continue the engine change on Bruce Larson's car. Maynard Yangst is there. Also, their teammate Tim Richards from Amato's team over making sure that everything goes smoothly. We'll be back. Buckmasters presents Woods and Water with country singer Johnny Lee. 
Hi everybody, I'm Johnny Lee. And if you like to hunt or fish, or if you just plain love the outdoors, get your pencils ready, because this album is just for you. Looks like another good season With Daisy and Buck in the back of my truck It's gonna be a beautiful day Remember when your dad gave you your first gun? Daddy gave this gun to me, now I'm giving it to you. And I tell you what he told me, son, about this old 22. Well, who's that all the shooters all coming to see? It ain't dead, I dick, it's Johnny One Shot Lee. Ha, ha, ha. Ever had buck fever? I had buck fever. It was my first time buck fever. I couldn't cross that line. If you like fishing, you're gonna like this one. Like my old rod and reel, spinning and casting, living and laughing on the water. Now this album is dedicated to you, the outdoorsman. I'm headed for the country right now. I got my tape. Call now and get yours. What a wonderful world. Enjoy these other outdoor favorites by country great Johnny Lee. You'll cherish them for a lifetime. Order your Woods & Water album or cassette for only $9.99 plus $2 shipping and handling. Call now, 1-800-722-7000. Visa and MasterCard accepted. Don't miss this special offer. Call 1-800-722-7000. With a beautiful Hoosier sunset as a backdrop, it is time for the final pro rounds here at the U.S. Nationals. Pro stock is already on the pad. Larry Morgan versus Bob Glidden. We heard Larry Morgan mention being beaten at his home track. That was Columbus, Ohio, the Spring Nationals. Don Garland, he is still smarting from that. Yes, he is. And, you know, the word in the pits is that Glidden owns Indianapolis. And so you can bet that Morgan would surely like to put him away here and get revenge for that loss at Columbus. And I don't think the crowd's feelings play a part in this because you'll find as many people from Larry Morgan's home state of Ohio as you will Bob Glidden's home state right here in Indiana. They travel here in mass. Well, the announcer just pulled the crowd just a few moments ago, and they were even for both cars. Just before Glidden fired the Ford Pro, Paul talked with him. Bob, hey. could be history here. What do you think? I'll tell you, Paul, every time we go down the racetrack, it seems like it's history, but this is a very important race for us. You know, you people talk about the 75th win. That's not the most important thing for us. This is a, a very important uh, a challenge for us in the Winston Points chase, and uh, it would be very beneficial for us to win this round. Well, there are a couple of thousand fans sitting out there and all of them cheering for you. Best of luck, number 75 may be coming. Thanks, Paul. But if anyone ever had a real good shot of beating Bob Glidden in the finals, maybe even taking the favorite's role, it's got to be Larry Morgan, Don. Well, there's only one hundredth of a second separating these two cars, a 739 to a 740. That could easily be made on the starting line. And remember, Morgan has been brilliant today. Absolutely. And with the sun setting, there is no difference in these lanes, especially not for pro stocks. They've got maybe 1,200 horsepower. The nitro car is 4,000. They're easier to control on maybe a bit of an off race track. Everyone is on their feet. It is Glidden with a slight advantage. Morgan starts to assert himself. The Glidden boys cheer on their father, but not enough. Larry Morgan has won the U.S. Nationals. Incredible. It was one close race, but it wasn't to be. Still, you looked like you enjoyed it. Yes, anytime you get to the finals of the Nationals, it's got to be enjoyable. And uh, Larry Morgan has had a great weekend. He's a good driver. He's a good competitor. And we wish him well. And number 75 is just around the corner. And it's still around the corner, but there's lots of races left. All right, Eddie Glidden. One terrific lady. Don Garland, let's analyze this again and replay. Well, Bob Glidden takes a definite starting line advantage over the brilliant starting techniques that Morgan had been using all day long. Very surprising, but the Oldsmobile engine in Morgan's car begins to show the true power in the middle of the race course and drives around the Ford. And Bob Glidden, even though he ran 187 miles an hour, could not make up the difference. 
Larry Morgan has picked the granddaddy of them all as his first national event victory. What a drive. I'll tell you, I told you before I was going to wear Glidden out here because he made me look bad at home. And I'll tell you, it's the only way I could get back at him was here. 7.36 to close it out. Woo, that's good. I'll tell you what, all the guys to shop, Jimmy Oliver, Dale Icke, Andy Magnuson, Gary Pearman, especially my crew chief, Tom Roberts, Dick Adelsberger, my wife, Pinella Castro, Oldsmobile, I couldn't be any happier for them. Without them, I wouldn't be here, and I am so happy to be here. And we are very happy for you. Even though Glenn's the hometown boy, you should have heard the crowd roar. <laughs> I'm happy. I am really happy. Thank oh, boy, what a victory. What a sweet one. He's worked so hard for it. Going to be a lot of celebrating for Larry Morgan, the crew and his fans at Indianapolis Raceway Park. Don? Going into the finals here at the 35th U.S. Nationals, the weather has turned around and given us a real break. It's real cool, no wind. These nitro motors will just fly in this kind of weather. Plus, it means the track is cool. That means the ETs can be better. Funny car, Perdome needs to back up that national record of 517. If he does that, I don't think Larson can run with him. Now, the top fuelers, that's another question. 504 for Gwynn, a 501 for LaHaye. Either car could run four seconds. We may have a side-by-side -side four second run, but I think that tiny little margin of performance goes to LaHaye, and I'm gonna give him the nod. So those are Don's picks. The final rounds in Funny Car and Top Fuel hold so much promise. They work in the LaHaye pit. Final touches on his car. The Funny Car final coming up. Logan Pass, Montana and Old Milwaukee both mean something great to these guys. Logan Pass means trailblazing, exploring the wilderness of Glacier National Park. And Old Milwaukee means a great beer. Cold, crisp Old Milwaukee beer and smooth, golden Old Milwaukee light. There's nothing like the flavor of a special place, an Old Milwaukee beer. Old Milwaukee and Old Milwaukee light. Guys, it just doesn't get any better than this. All of these championship winning drivers have one thing in common, Goodyear Racing Eagles. The race winning technology that's found in the Goodyear Racing Eagles can also be found in the Goodyear Eagle line of high performance street radials, the best selling performance tires in the world. Goodyear Eagles, for the spirit of a champion that's in all of us. do-it-yourself faucets come with the total faucet and finish warranty. No other faucet warranty can beat it. In other words, the Peerless warranty really holds water. Now through October 14th, get $5 back. This week, on stage stars the Bellamy Brothers, Janie Fricky, Ronnie McDowell, Paul Overstreet, and Carl Perkins. On stage, TNN's top concert series, weeknights on TNN. Pass the word. It's time for the final run in Funny Car Eliminator, the most violent race cars in all of motorsports here at the biggest drag race of the year, the 35th annual U.S. Nationals at Indianapolis Raceway Park. I'm Steve Evans along with Paul Page and Big Daddy Don Garland, and there with the engine change completed is the Bruce Larson car, Don. And I'll bet this is the first time that a Perdome will ever be being cheered for by Bernstein in the pits. Oh, absolutely. Bernstein desperately needs for Perdome to beat Larson to prevent him from earning any more points. Mike Clover gets Perdome back into place. It's been 12 years since Perdome has seen a victory here at Indianapolis Raceway Park. For Larson, well, he scored his first Nationals victory in a career that spans over three decades just last year at the Cajun Nationals. So he certainly has a lot on the line here against the great Don Verdome. After what we saw with Mike Dunn and Don Verdome, I don't think you're going to see the snake uh, very uh, selective about who stages first. Yeah, Snake is not going to be uh, trying to run Larson's race. He's going to stage when his car is ready to go. And they are both in. It's a beautiful start. 
the nitro flames licking at the fiberglass bodies. It is Don Prudhomme. A dream weekend for the snake. 527 defeats Larson's 537. Like a 527, he's done it again at the U.S. Nationals. Uh, would have been nice to set the record, but uh, we'll take the sweep. We're all happy. I can't say enough. It's uh, been a long week. I'd like to thank the crew. we got a great crew. And uh, Dana Kimmel, uh, Larry Dixon Jr., Troy Tronson, uh, all the guys, Curtis Dipple, all the guys that helped this week, uh, people from uh, the rear end company, uh, U.S. Gear. Uh, they made a set of rear end gears for us that let us run these kind of elapsed times this week. Historic time. Maybe it's the last win in a funny car for him. Oh, well, there's some races left. We can do some more winning this year, and uh, we're going to go to Texas to race, so uh, maybe we'll see some more teens down there in Texas. We look forward to it. Congratulations. Well, that's what you want, Don Girl. It's a crew chief who is never satisfied, who always wants more. That's right. As we watch this replay of this start, we can see that Larson was getting his act together. They make a beautiful start. They come out side by side where, you know, generally all day long, Larson had been late in driving around these guys, but he knew he wasn't going to drive around the snake. It was, in fact, the snake driving around Larson at mid-track, and he went on to take this win in grand style. It's been a long time, maybe never, have we seen oh, a funny car performance like this man put on this weekend. You won in your own style, a throat-ripping, back-breaking performance. Well, thank you, Steve. I'll tell you, I owe it all to Skull, Pontiac, and my, my crew, Mike Clover, Dana, Larry, all the guys. Uh, Troy did a tremendous job. You know, we've been struggling in the first part of the year, and to come here to Indy, it's been a been a special race for me since 1965, the first time I won it. There was no messing around on the starting line this time. Larson went right up in stage. In fact, he overstaged. Yes, he did, I, but I knew he was going to overstage and push the light, and I just uh, did the best I could do and uh, try and get off as good as I could with him because he's an awfully good driver. Can you look back now and believe how flawless this weekend has been? It's just been wonderful, and I don't even know what the ET was. Can you tell me? A 27, does it matter? Oh, that's great. It, yeah, it's just really running consistent. I wish we could have set the national record while we were here. We were hoping on the last run we'd do it, but there's going to be more races. And to win the U.S. Nationals in what might be your last appearance in a funny car special. Yeah, that, <laughs> that's what makes it uh, really, really special, because I am going to top fuel, and, and this is where I started out, Indy here, you know, in 65 with a top fuel car and to, and to end my career in a funny car at this race is uh, great and once again i just got to thank my sponsor skull our best thank you very much steve look out top fuel snakes on his way you can certainly tell the importance of the u.s nationals by the emotion that the snake is displaying here for us well a lot of emotion about to take place on the starting line the final combatants the kings of the sport top fuel dragsters and two teams who come to the starting line with total confidence. We've seen it all day long with Dick LaHaye and with Daryl Gwynn. And I have to agree with something Don Garland said a bit earlier. There is the potential here for the first side-by-side -side four second run. Earlier in the day, Paul Page found a very interesting story that relates to Daryl Gwynn. Well, Steve, as well you know in the pits, you get approached a lot of times by people who will hand you their business card because they have some concern about drag racing that they'd like to talk about. Well, it's happened to me. This is the business card by the chief executive officer and the president of the Daryl Gwynn Fan Club. Well, let's meet that top executive now, Robbie Franks. This is, uh, this is your organization. How come you're so interested? Well, I just was watching a race the Winter Nationals, 87 Winter Nationals, and I saw Daryl Wren, and I just picked him. Why was he special for you? He's a neat guy, I know. I don't know. I can't remember. It just kind of turned on for you? Yep. How many members of this organization now? Around 100. Do you have a newsletter? Do you get together? Um, we're working on that now. And what about you and your future career? Are you going to run fan clubs all your life, or maybe you're going to run a top fuel dragster? Probably a top fielder extra. All right. This may be one of the stars of the future, Robbie Franks. Steve? And Robbie comes all the way from Lake Elsinore, California, to root for the man from Florida, Gerald Gwynn in the far lane. Big Daddy, your thoughts? Well, I'm looking at the two cars, and they're so evenly matched. We have the potential for a four-second run, as Steve said earlier. Look at uh, Jerry Gwynn, how important this race is. You can see it in his face. He wants to win, but I think that... LaHaye still has that slight advantage on the starting line. 
and to the end of the race. He's, he just runs so good today. And La Haye is off the mark first, but has problems. Darrell Gwynn, eight rocket ships down that far lane, has won the U.S. Nationals at 504, 280 miles per hour. The crew is delirious. A fireworks show for Darrell Gwynn as he circles at the end of the racetrack. Just goes to show you can never make decisions in drag racing. Anybody can win. Ken, that's a dancing crew, but you've done it. The U.S. Nationals title is yours with a 504. We're, I mean, we couldn't, do, we couldn't be any happier. Everything was perfect. We just run it hard enough to try and get down that lane. I mean, we were afraid of the lane, and we just, we not tried to be stellar. We just wanted to go down the drag strip. Well, it got the job done. Congratulations. Do you got it. Errol Gwen takes the U.S. Nationals. And Paul, we're told that Dick LaHaye had a supercharger drive failure. He definitely left first, Don. Yes, and the advantage that LaHaye took at the starting line, it would have only taken a 507 for him to win the race. But that only counts in horseshoes. Gwen won it with three 504s in a row. Three times, Daryl Gwen has been disappointed in the final round at the U.S. Nationals. Not this afternoon. You got it. This is it. I've been here three or four times in the final. There ain't nothing like winning the granddaddy of them all. I'd just like to say thank you to these people right here. They do so much for me and make me feel so at home. It makes me drive better. That's how much better they make me feel. Were you confident in that lane? You ran a 504. Well, we did what we thought that lane could handle and take a risk that LaHaye might mess up, and that's exactly what we did. Well, he broke apparently right off the starting line. A fantastic job all weekend. This has salvaged your year, more than that even. You got that right. I counted Gainesville as winning two races because it's such a good one for my hometown, but this is like winning uh, five or six like we did last year. Thank Again. you. Well, obviously, a very important victory as Daryl Gwynn takes his first U.S. Nationals title. A special salute to all the winners at the U.S. Nationals. You've already seen the pros. Top alcohol dragster Tom Conway, Pat Austin in top alcohol funny car, Joe Fica in comps, super stock Jim Bordeaux, stock R.J. Sledge, super gas Gary Sheenan, and John Myers in pro stock motorcycle. This is Paul Page for Don Garlitz and Steve Evans. So long from the 35th. U.S. Nationals. The executive producer for American Sports Cavalcade is Harvey M. Palish, produced and directed by John B. Mullen. Promotional consideration provided for and a fee paid by the Style Auto World Championship team. The nation's premier source of fast lane fashions, Style Auto, the champion's choice for the style of your life. And by this special offer from Diamond V. 1989 is one drag racing season you won't want to forget. 19 national and nature events, championships too close to call, and some spectacular incidents. That's why you should order Diamond P Videos Drag Racing 89. And we've added 30 minutes this year. That means 120 minutes of drag racing for just $39.95. For avoiding the Christmas rush, Diamond P Sports is giving away a free hat with every Drag Racing 89 ordered before September 30th. I sold five of them just standing here. I even bought one. So call 1-800-453-8800 now. Drag Racing 89 will be shipped to you in early November. That's 1-800-453-8800 for Drag Racing 89. 39 dollars plus 350 shipping and handling. Visa and MasterCard accepted, no CODs. Offer void after September 30th, 1989. The American Sports Cavalcade is a presentation